in the beginning there was Jack, and Jack had a groove, and from this groove came the grooves of all grooves. And while one day viciously throwing down on his box, Jack boldly declared, let there be house, and house music was born. I am, you see, I am the creator, and this is my house. And in my house, there is only house music. But I am not so selfish, because once you enter my house, it then becomes our house and our house music. And you see, no one man owns house, because house music is a universal language spoken, understood by all. You see, house is a feeling that no one can understand, really, unless you're deep into the vibe of house. House is an uncontrollable desire to jack your body. And as I told you before, this is our house and our house music. And every house you understand, there is a keeper. And in this house, the keeper is Jack. Now, some of you might wonder who is Jack and what is it that Jack does. Jack is the one who gives you the power to jack your body. Jack is the one who gives you the power to do the snake. Jack is the one who gives you the key to the wiggly word. Jack is the one who learns you how to walk your body. Jack is the one that can bring nations and nations of all jackals together under one house. You may be black, you may be white, you may be Jew or Gentile. It don't make a difference in our house. And this is fresh.
días que, que escucha voces. Cree que algo viene por ahí. Cuenta. Oiga la voz. Cada vez más fuerte. ¿Qué hizo? Nada. Dígame lo que hizo. Se, se robó un collar de plata de una carreta gitana. Lo quisimos devolver, pero no lo aceptaron. ¿Dónde está? ¿Aquí? Tráigala adentro. Pedimos que bendigas a este niño enfermo. Y que bendigas el... I think at the edge of our consciousness, there's always the fear that perhaps indeed uh, there is such a thing. If we don't right. believe it. We Catholics do hold it, and Christians in general do hold it. But there's a consciousness that there's some evil spirit at work. It could be in our world, and we're afraid of it. Uh, and that it can, according to the belief in many parts of the world and in many parts of history of man, there is, uh, there is the possibility of being possessed of one's body being dominated by such an evil spirit and uh, used for nefarious ends. Doctor, uh, the devil, is the devil a fallen angel? Is that correct? That's the idea. Uh, they are all fallen angels. The idea is that once upon a time, one-third of the angels of God revolted against him and were condemned to hell and became demons. What was the purpose of that rebellion, Doctor? The purpose of the rebellion was simply the ambition of one spirit, Lucifer, the son of the dawn, that's what his name means, uh, the light bearer or the son of the dawn, who said, uh, I will not serve. I will be equal to God. And he was opposed by one spirit who said, Who is like unto God? And that's the name of Michael, Mikael, who is like unto God. Mm -hmm. And there was this, supposedly, this huge battle between the spirits, and the demons lost. And Michael and those fighting for God won. And forever the, 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 the fallen angels, those who rebelled, are condemned to hell and condemned to, uh, to be evil and to promote evil amongst human beings. How do we, human beings, fit into the picture? It's almost as though the war is over human beings. Yes, it is over human beings. The teaching is that once upon a time God envisaged the world inhabited by men and women and served by angels. But when Lucifer and Satan and the other demons, then angels, were asked to co collaborate and cooperate and serve human beings, especially one particular human being who would be God, namely Christ Jesus of Nazareth, they said, no, we are angels, we are superior to these material beings. We haven't got their limitations, and we don't die, and we haven't got material bodies, we are pure spirits. Uh, so they, they, they were destined originally to serve human beings, and they refused.
What the passage portrays, and it's very difficult for many people to absorb this, it portrays fallen angels. These are not the good guys. Remember when Satan fell, a third of the angels fell with him. Not all of them, but a group of them, apparently, and we'll talk more about this in a minute, chose to try to create a hybrid race by cohabit. By, I don't know the technology. Uh, I, I'm not going to get into that. But they apparently uh, uh, were... See, angels can't multiply. Angels are eternal. There's, uh, reproduction is a process for mortals. But at the same time, Satan's got a problem. A third of the angels fell with him, so he's got a deficiency of two to one in any war that comes in. He's got to find a, find a way to strengthen himself. This may be, this is just a, con a conjecture that floats around. Now, the offspring are Nephilim. They're also called the Hagibarim, the mighty ones. And uh, now, where the confusion starts to set in is when this Hebrew passage was translated into the Greek in the Septuagint, the word they used for the Nephilim was gigantes. It sounds like giants. And it turns out they were giants, but that's not what the word means. Gigantis comes from gigas, which means earthborn. So in the Hebrew, they're called the fallen ones. In the Greek, they're called the earthborn. The purpose of the flood was not just that there was sin in the land. There was, and that's emphasized. But if, if, if sin brings the flood, we better get some life jackets. No, there's something far deeper going on. That's what I want to sensitize you for when you do your own study and come to your own conclusions, but I want you to recognize there's something much more profound that God, there's a problem that God was solving, and that is that Satan's strategy was to contaminate.